Hey everybody, good evening. We're all here. I'd like to welcome you to the special town board meeting, joint town board meeting of the town of Rhinebeck and the town of Clinton. It is February 6, 2019. Would everybody please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Board Member Brennan, and I am recusing myself from the voting this evening. Thank you. Um, I just want to introduce everybody here. We have uh, Supervisor Ray Overly. We have Councilperson uh, Dean Michael. We have Councilperson Nancy Cunningham. We have Councilperson Mike Witten, and we have Councilperson Elliot Warner from Clinton. And Ryan Beck, I think you uh, know the players, my Deputy Supervisor, Alan Scher, Ed Roberts, and Chauncey Walker, and Brennan, uh, because she's being considered, has recused herself from the whole process. Um, I'm going to open this with uh, inviting our candidates up to speak to us, not to exceed three minutes. We have interviewed everybody. Robbie Long was a late comer. Uh, he was away and put his name in the hat on Monday. Uh, we were not able to meet the required um, special meeting notice. We didn't have all of our council people available and so could not do a public meeting. But uh, Chauncey and I and Michael Whitten met with Michael and the rest were instructed to reach out and do it on their own. Um, Robbie's resume and cover letter has been posted on our website since we received it on Monday. So um, after that, I'm anticipating no uh, nominating all of the names forward, uh, and I will ask for a second, and then we will do an open vote, vote, a roll call vote, as we do when we're um, when we're voting uh, a local law. I believe that uh, the public needs to see how each of us votes, so we will do that. Um, then we, once we have a candidate with the majority, not a plurality, but a majority, over 50%, we will swear that person in and um, say goodbye and come back tomorrow. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Um, uh, I'd like to invite Rob Long up to um, speak. Uh, if you can go there and please address the boards. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Robbie Long, and I want to thank the uh, boards for making it the opportunity available to me. I, I know I was late, and I appreciate uh, the work that folks did at our meeting yesterday and the conversations that I've had. You know, it's interesting. Uh, and I also want to thank all the other applicants. In fact, I saw one of my neighbors, Mr. Rossi, I didn't realize he lived down the street from me. Uh, and, you know, it's been winter since I lived in, in the village. And I was, I've lived in, you know, I first came up here and I lived in Clinton, and I've lived in the town, and I've lived in the village. And so I've, I've certainly lived in all the different localities within our, within our area. And I've enjoyed all of them. And I love the Hudson Valley. I'm a transplant. I grew up in Tennessee. And I've um, always been proud to be a southerner, but I've been in New York now for about 35 years. And I started thinking about this quick three minutes I have, and I started thinking, well, you know what? Um, I, I, for some reason, this first thing that came to my mind is, was that when I, I'm from a large family, not that large, six kids, and, and one of the early stories of my family, I'm the last, and all of a sudden, I'm upstairs, I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying, and my mother is going, ah, don't worry about it, tell my sister, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Finally, she goes upstairs, and I'm hanging out of the crib backwards with my head inside the crib, and I'm, you know, close to, uh, you know, strangling myself. And so, what really, wh why do I tell this story? It's because early on, you know, I've learned what it takes to really get things done. And, and that's really what it amounts to. And so, you know, and I've been doing it for a long time. I've been an entrepreneur. Um, I've financed a number of healthcare companies. I've worked on boards of directors. I've uh, volunteered here locally, either at the church or uh, even with the town. I mean, with the, well, the town uh, tax agreement support. So I've done um, a number of items like that and I always get involved. Um, I'm very involved with my AA group here in town. And so um, I tell you all this because you know, I haven't had a lot of governmental experience, but I have had these experiences, and I know how to reach out 
um, and I know how to, to work, really work with people. And that's really the main things that I want to convey. And, and like all the other, you know, applicants, to, which are all a great group, and I, I think it's, we should be proud that we have such a group. And so, uh, you know, so last of that, you know, it's interesting. I went to a liberal arts college down south, and our motto was really the honor code, and that was really what drove the whole school. And so I, I like to live my life by that. The last thing I would like to say is that, you know, I'd like to live by the few, tru few truths that, you know, I like to say what I mean and mean what I say. And so I really want to thank everyone tonight, and I appreciate your time, and, and thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. boards of Rhinebeck and Clinton, hoping to gain a full understanding of what you all believed uh, the emphasis should be, where you think you could be served best by a county legislator. Uh, and despite the differences in the personality and the makeup of the two towns, I do believe there's more that crosses over than separates the towns. And I would hope to keep this dialogue going throughout. Uh, but beyond this, I would place my focus on issues and efforts that affect the county overall. And certainly, these are ones that also affect Rhinebeck and Clinton. And those would namely be taxes and ticks and technology. A little alliteration for your enjoyment. Um, taxes. How might we find some relief in this very expensive town, in this very expensive, excuse me, county that we live in? Uh, ticks. How might we do a better job combating tick-borne illnesses and diseases here in Tick Central Duchess? And technology, how might we better promote and incentivize more forward-thinking green methodologies? And, in addition, how might we get better cell phone coverage in our area? Um, I recently said to a friend, I fear to work in my garden because I'm afraid of Lyme, and I fear to walk along my road because if I fell down and had to dial 911, likely I could not get a, I could not get a call out. And that does frighten me. Um, to remind you of my qualifications and my accomplishments, I'm currently a part-time teacher at Marist College. As such, I have a great deal of time to devote to this position. And though relatively dormant these days, for many years I've also been a locally based small business owner. I was even a former shopkeeper in Rhinebeck Village, which is another way of saying I understand how to work hard, uh, I understand how to be productive, and I understand how to communicate effectively with a great variety of people. Uh, even before living in Rhinebeck, as a fellow resident of Northern Dutchess County in the town of Milan, I was politically active and involved as a core election team member in a number of political campaigns, as a member of a number of town committees and groups and teams, and as a regular attendee of the various town board meetings, sharing my voice when I thought I had something constructive to contribute. Uh, some of the accomplishments I'm most proud of are uh, chairing the Town of Milan's former Communications Committee, serving as the Editor-in-Chief of this committee's quarterly newsletter, and volunteering on the Town's Rescue Squad for six years. Uh, in closing, if I may please propose myself and why me, uh, I certainly think someone intelligent and capable should be selected, someone with a solid track record of hard work, someone with ample time to promote to the position, someone who knows how to dig in shoulder to shoulder with all types of people and produce results, uh, someone with a lifelong belief in core democratic values, which to me are transparency, and the conviction that the greater good supersedes the agenda of any individual. Uh, I trust in all these areas you'll find me qualified. But again, and even more so, I believe someone with a clear focus should be your choice, Again, my focus would be taxes, ticks, and technology. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Brand Nudiker. If you don't know me, I live in the village with my wife and two kids who are in Rhinebeck Public Schools. A um, little bit about my background. I've been a businessman for 31 years. Uh, I, I'm an Illinois licensed attorney and I came to New York. Uh, I don't have a New York <coughs> license in law, but I keep my license current. Um, I have extensive experience in commercial real estate leasing, in, especially in the cellular tower industry and uh, program management experience in the cellular tower industry. Um, I uh, came here and I'm a property manager for my own um, real estate investments. And it, as far as my public service, for about 11 years I've either been a volunteer here in, in Rhinebeck or I've been most significantly a elected official on the, on the village board. And I'm proud of my accomplishments as a, as a village board member in particular. Um, for example, I've done various and sundry things, such as negotiating a $1 million bond payoff for the wastewater facility users uh, with uh, then <coughs> Tim Reardon and real estate developers. They came in and bought a shuttered uh, real estate development, and it was a win-win for, for, for all sides. I've played a major role in the creation of several code revisions, including working on a commission to rewrite the entire zoning code. I initiated the events code, which is very useful. I was co-liaison, was instrumental in building the police station. I've been on the ethics board twice for the, for the town of Rhinebeck, and I was on the village zoning board of appeals as an alternate, but I probably went to half the meetings when I was on the, on the uh, ZBA. If appointed, I will caucus with the Democratic Party, but most of my success on the village board has been working collaboratively with others, especially folks across the aisle. I hear from county board members that the culture there is more divisive than that of the previous boards that I've worked on. However, I'm a tough local legislator with good ideas and vision, and well-reasoned positions are ultimately hard to ignore. I've been a door-to-door -door campaigner, reaching almost every door in several local races. I know about voter outreach, and I listen. Most significantly, I learned early from the voters that the most important thing they're concerned about is that we don't have division in politics, that we, have, we don't have devices, government, or governance. I will work tirelessly as a representative of Rhinebeck and Clinton. The county legislator needs to, be, to provide executive branch oversight and facilitates laws that benefit their constituents. My goals would be oversight for ethics and procurement policies, for incarceration reforms, because we can't afford to have people that go to waste. Industrial Development Agency oversight to keep an eye on property tax giveaways. I will advocate against unfunded state mandates, as I do already, for your property tax relief. And constituent needs, like assisting to the best I can the needs of our heroic volunteer fire departments. My background in business law and government is uniquely suited for this role. I have a record of accomplishment, and I urge you folks to appoint me. Thank you. If um, anyone is wondering about my methodology for calling people forward, I uh, divided everybody. All the women came first alphabetically, so I divided the men and women and ranked them alphabetically and shuffled them together. <laughs> It's always a, a methodology. So come on up, Kara. Good evening. Better? Better. Yeah, there we go. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to come and stand before you again for a few minutes and just check in before we go to vote. Um, I want to just bring up, remind you, my, my master's is in sustainable communities and socially responsible business. I've got 11 years of experience as a business consultant and entrepreneur working extensively on, on the system of organization to make it better. I feel that that's really what I have to bring to the table is the ability to look at the system of this county and see maybe where there are some places that aren't quite working, where the, the budgets may be putting money in, where it could be better spent in other ways. I feel that the two things that are the most important to me are transparency and fairness. The fairness you'll see in my devotion to both the environment and to social justice. And transparency, I feel, will be most visible in the way that I interact with the communities, both coming and saying, Here, here's what we have going on, as well as 
um, be as forthcoming as possible with, with updates um, to make sure everyone has what they need. I really, you know, I think from my heart just feel like I, I want the best person possible to be in this role. And I know that every one of us who's standing up here and talking to you right now um, support that to be the case. So thank you. Whatever your vote is will be exactly what it needs to be. Thank you. with a, um, a call out and a thank you to the folks from Panda. Because the folks from Panda did an exceptional job last week getting the videos up online very quickly. And because they got them up online very quickly, many of our constituents were able to see the interviews of all the candidates. Um, because so many of the constituents got to see the interviews, I was able to have more feedback. Uh, and that's how I want a few that's how I want to fill my couple of minutes with you this evening. So I literally want to share with you some of the feedback that I got on my performance from last week, good, good and bad. Um, because, and I hope it's obvious why I want to do this, that's our job. That's very simply the job of everyone in public service, everyone here tonight and everyone vying for this position, listening to your constituents. So um, here's some of the things that, uh, that I heard over the phone or in conversation both from friends and family. Did you know that the question, did you know the questions in advance? No, I did not know the questions in advance. I was advised to be here at 1.30. I sat down and I heard the questions for the first time, which was perfectly fine because everybody here, everyone who's in government and public service knows that you have to be prepared for things that are unexpected. You have to be prepared to be spontaneous. Uh, when I was on the Board of Education, one of the most unexpected events that we ever had was a child coming into one of our grammar schools with a pistol. It was a toy pistol, but we didn't know that at the time. Um, obviously, in the village, things happen. Water main breaks, a tree falls onto a power line. So you've got to be prepared to deal with things that are unexpected. Um, you campaigned in many different locations for a lot of different candidates, but you didn't discuss all of them. Uh, that's true, but because there's a lot of locations, a lot of different towns and villages, but absolutely the single best way to prepare for this job or any job in public service. Be on the doorstep. When you're on the doorstep campaigning, yeah, you're out there and obviously you're there to secure votes, but you're also learning. And, and do think about it, you are in the person's comfort zone. You're at their doorstep and there's no substitute. Nobody, it is absolutely the best thing that anyone in public service can be doing uh, for any position that they pursue. Um, You've been in five different races. You won four, you lost one. But you spent an awful lot of time talking about the, the race that you lost. Why? <laughs> That's a good question. Why did I do that? Uh, well, um, I, I'd like to say it's because, um, uh, because I don't think that being humble is weak. I don't think that having some humility is weak. I actually think it's being strong. Uh, and I was hoping to convey that to the board. I didn't mean to overtalk. A, a race that I lost that happens to be the very seat that I'm pursuing here, but that's the reality and I wasn't afraid to, to own up to that. Um, and I think that uh, that's all my questions with one last one. Now this one hurts, okay? Um, Dad, what's with that really short haircut? <laughs> Sad face emoji, thank you. We didn't catch his name, who is that? John John Rossi. Thank you. It's on our agenda. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Brennan Kearney. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, thanks for giving us the chance to address the boards again. Um, and I'm going to try and do it without notes again, although I'm pleased to see other people brought notes up this time. Um, I wanted to re-emphasize a couple things about myself that I think are important when considering me for this seat. First is personality. Um, we're not having a personality contest here. I don't think I'd win if we did. But um, I have a good working relationship with my fellow board members, and I would hope to continue that. I'm a team player. I'm a consensus builder. 
and I think that those are going to be very important um, for whoever has this spot, um, both as a caucus member um, and a legislative member in general. Um, I'm also really friendly, and what I found um, serving on the board is that I think that's made me very approachable uh, for residents and for staff members here at Town Hall. Uh, people have felt comfortable coming and talking with me about problems, about questions, about ideas, and I hope I would bring that strength um, as a resident liaison and a liaison to these two boards um, at the legislative level. Um, I have many, many years of building, planning, and zoning experience. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a couple things. Uh, you heard this a little bit last time, but things that I worked on on this board. Um, I campaigned promising to offer assistance um, in restructuring or, or taking a closer look at our zoning department, which was having difficulties. And I was able immediately with the board and the supervisor to restructure that department and to hire a full-time zoning administrator, um, which has been an enormous success for us here at Town Hall. Um, I think we're offering better customer service to our residents. The process is faster, clearer, um, and we are also doing code enforcement, which was something we did not have the time to devote to. Um, so that's happening, and that's very exciting for us here at Town Hall. A little bit after that, um, the board and uh, the supervisor and I also had the opportunity to create another full-time position. Um, we made our building secretary um, full-time with benefits. And that's important to me for a couple of reasons that I want to emphasize. One, it's in line with my values. Um, good jobs with benefits full-time when finances permit. Um, we in Rhinebeck have a fund balance, so we're lucky to have some of the tools to make that happen. Um, number two, it stops attrition in town hall because we've lost over the years great part-timers who leave for a, a full-time job somewhere else. And I can't tell you how important our staff at town hall is. I know, I'm sure the Clinton board knows the same thing. I know our board feels that way. When we lose people, it weakens our ability to serve the public. So hopefully we've got our building department secretary for a long time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any um, comments or questions from anyone at the board? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to uh, bring forth Robert Long, Evelyn Barton, Brent Nuneker, Kara Bonanza, John Rossi, and Brennan Carney for consideration of, uh, of the vote. Uh, vote on who will be our legislator. May I have a second? Thank you, Alan. Is there any discussion? So we're voting on all six at one time. No, I am going to call roll call and you're no, going No, no, no. I meant all six candidates for voting. I'm going to tell you. Oh. We are going through the roll call. I'm going to call your name yes. and you are going to publicly state who you're voting for. Yeah, one of the six. One of the six. That's, Any that's one. Only time. one. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing it in alphabetical order, starting with Clinton, Councilperson Nancy Cunningham. Um, I cast the vote for John Rossi. Thank you. Dean Michael. John Rossi. Thank you. Ray Oberly. John Rossi. Thank you. Elliot Warner. Brennan Carter. Thank you. Michael Whitten. Brennan Carney. Thank you. Ed Roberts. Brennan Carney. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Supervisor Alan Scher. Brennan Carney. Councilperson Chauncey Walker. Brennan Carney. And I vote for Brennan Carney. To vote total, clerk? <laughs> well done. Uh, the votes are weighted. We have 12.74, and I believe Clinton has 7.2. Um, everybody, thank you so much for coming forward for consideration. Um, I hope that those of you who aren't currently serving will consider serving uh, in the town of Rhinebeck. We need people on our statutory boards, on our conservation advisory board. We're going to need a candidate to replace Brennan on the town board. 
We need uh, people to serve on our zoning board of appeals. We need we need people. So I'm going to be calling on you, and I'm very very grateful that you came forward. Um, Brent and John, I know you'll continue with your good work uh, across the street, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. And Brennan, um, congratulations, and I'm uh, looking forward to working with you uh, on solving, uh, solving some of the issues that affect us uh, here in Rhinebeck that need to be fixed on the county level. So, um, I'm gonna s thank you. I'm going to swear you in, and then we're going to pass the, uh, actually, should I pass the resolution first? I think, I think we passed the resolution. You think the resolution passed? Okay. Resolution 2091051 was our vote. So John will certify this and get it down to the uh, county. Brennan, if you could come forward. solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will, that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of Dutchess County Legislator. Of Dutchess County Legislator. For District 11. For District 11. Rhinebeck and Clinton. Rhinebeck and Clinton. For the above term of office according to the best of my ability. For the above term of office according to the best of my ability. Now the term starts uh, today and it ends on the 31st of December. Yes. And you're going down to the county tomorrow to uh, get signed up. So congratulations. Challenging to have this thrown at us, and I'm, I hope you're all as excited as we are to move on um, positively with new representation in the county. So, uh, does anybody want to say anything? Clinton, thank you for coming. Thank you. Hearing nothing, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Good night, everybody.